Mitt Romney's granite fortress is under siege, and Newt Gingrich is knocking at the front door. Meanwhile, Herman Cain has basically called it quits, but his cash, endorsement, and influence are still up for grabs. It's not calm in Congress either. Both sides are fighting for their versions of a payroll tax cut bill, and they're getting nowhere fast. Tonight, we're wrapping up the week's most talked about political stories, and they all start and end with the road to the White House. Mark Levine is the host of the Inside Scoop and the Raucous Caucus on Pacific Radio. He also served as legislative counsel to Congressman Barney Frank. So President Obama gave an epic speech this week trying to sound like Roosevelt. Did he pull it off? Well, I think he actually invoked the right president because Teddy Roosevelt is a far cry from today's Republican Party. He, of course, was the progressive Republican president, not someone that, uh, that today's Republicans talk about too much. But sure, he was someone who looked out for the little guy, who believed in, in going after the big corporations. And I think President Obama understands that feeling that Americans are very angry about today. So with everything that, we've, that, he's, that the Obama administration has tried to get forward, along with the Democrats, even Barney Frank, I think, has had this criticism of the president that he pre-negotiates his deals before they get to Congress to try to make them more palatable <laughs> so he doesn't have to fool around with dickering all the time. You know, I would do that too if I were president. Instead of being like a car dealer going back and forth or negotiating a, a home mortgage, buying a house, just give it your best shot the first time. I guess it doesn't work that way still. Huh? I actually think it's a mistake. I think Congress is far more like a car dealership. You know, President Obama ran for office talking about bringing the red states and blue states together he reached across the aisle a time and time again, and each time they would take his best offer as his first offer. If he wanted 100, he'd start at 50, and yeah. then they'd negotiate him down from there. Well, so he's certainly learned by that. I guess that's part of being a novice politician, even though he's not a novice politician, but his critics always say that this is not the right guy for the White House, that maybe Hillary could have gotten us farther along than where we are now. That's debatable since Hillary's not president. Where do we go from here with the, with, the, uh, with the tax cuts and everything else that's coming up to expire? Well, I think he's hitting stride now. I, I think Bill Clinton, by the hitting way... Hitting stride, but his, his term is up. Well, no, I I, mean, I, yeah, I, it, it's been a little late. Bill Clinton actually had a learning curve in his first two years as well. But right. coming the third year, if you compare Clinton and you compare Obama, Obama is now going out there and defending his base. And interestingly, he's defending something that not just most Democrats support, but most independents and most Republicans too. Even most people that make more than a million a year think they should pay more taxes. So this is a very, very popular position, and he's pushing the Republicans in a corner, because the Republicans say, uh, they say publicly that they don't want to raise taxes. But now Republicans are on the side of raising taxes, because really what they want is not to raise taxes on millionaires. When right. it comes to raising taxes on the 99% of us, they're happy to do that. So he's pushing them in a corner. I think he's going to win this battle before Christmas. You watch. Who would the White House rather be running against? Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich? You know, they've, they've had all the negative campaigning. They've done a lot knowing, thinking that Romney was going to be the, the nominee. But at the same time, they would probably prefer to run against Newt, against Newt Gingrich, thinking he's more vulnerable. What do you think? Well, I hate to admit the truth. As a Democrat, I, but there's no question that they'd rather run against Newt Gingrich. I mean, he has so much baggage. It would be so much easier to run against. But I, if you notice, the Democrats aren't criticizing Newt Gingrich very much right now. They'd like him to succeed. I'd like him to succeed as a Democrat. Uh, I don't think Romney's a strong opponent, but I do think Newt Gingrich is a lot weaker. What about the anyone but Romney strategy? If you, were, if you were telling the GOP what to do, how would you help them out? Well, they don't have a good candidate running. I mean, uh, Chris Christie's out of the race. Jeb Bush is out of the race. Uh, between Newt Gingrich and Michelle Bachman and Rick Perry, Mr. Oops, uh, I don't know who's left. I mean, Huntsman is actually a reasonable guy, and he's too reasonable to be the Republican nominee. He's too tied with the Obama administration, too. Well, that's true. He's the ambassador. I mean, uh, Republicans want to see some red meat. They've, they've got to see it in, in some candidate. When the day is over, is this uh, a contest for the president to lose coming up in 2012? I'll tell you, it all depends on the economy. And Pr President Obama got some real good news when the unemployment rate dropped from 9% to 8.6%. If it's below 8% on election day, I think he's cruising to re-election. If it's above 9%, I think he's lost. And in that middle range, we're going to have a very close race. What's your website? Uh, my website is marklevine.tv, and I also want to announce I'm beginning a new radio show. The Inside Scoop is coming uh, to DC Radio uh, at the beginning of January on We Act Radio, 1480 AM, a new progressive station. David Schuster's got the uh, Saturday 12 to 3 slot, and I've got the Sunday 12 to 3 slot. Good luck to you. Mark Levine, our guest on Capital Insider. Thanks for your insight tonight. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break.